Hello you amazing hackers, great having you back again for part 2 of this mini series. So today we're going to talk about OSCP preparation. You've done a lot of general IT preparation, you know what you're in for. Now how do you prepare for this damn exam and course because it's so difficult. Well let me first of all tell you it really is difficult but it's not impossible. A lot of people have done it before you and you can do it as well. I also recommend OSCP because it's a practical exam and it asks you to demonstrate your hacking abilities in a 24 hour exam, which for me is a great example of how it has to be done because of course there are cheaters still, but it's really hard. You're being watched, you're being monitored and you're actually being asked to demonstrate what you know, not just to write it down in a multiple choice form. So that's why I recommend OSCP, that being out of the way. Let's get into what you need for OSCP. So you have to have some personal traits for OSCP to succeed. First of all, one of the things that's always being thrown around when you go on the forums on the Reddit is try harder. That really rings true. Believe me, you have to have a try harder mentality. You have to have persistence and you have to have the ability to go on, to plow through the fields because it's going to be a hard journey. But like I said, it's not impossible. Many people, including me, have proven that it's not undoable. Now with the new syllabus and of course the new exam soon to come, it's going to be even harder. But you guys can do it. I sh I'm sure of it. I'm 100% sure that every single one of you guys that's watching right now can do this. So what, you, what else do you need? You need a lot of creativity. Some of you have probably already been hacking for quite a while now. And you know that creativity is one of the most important things to have in hacking. You need to be able to think outside of the box really good. And you also need to be really, really motivated because you're going to have to look up a lot of extra information. You're not just going to get the information on a platter like you're used to from some other courses or certifications. You're really going to have to get out of your way to get the information that you need. That being said, now you can start maybe preparing. So first of all, what do you need? I would recommend that you watch a variety of YouTube videos, that you uh, look up a variety of blog posts and maybe a variety of tutorials on following topics. First of all, enumeration is really important in a story. <clears throat> You'll notice that Nmap, Nikto, GoBuster, uh, all these enumeration tools are super important. And when you get your account and when you register for OSCP, you're going to see enumeration, enumeration, enumeration. It's going to return everywhere. So that's why I keep telling you, watch some enumeration videos. Maybe start w out watching some Hack the Box videos as well. Because, uh, for example, Ipsec, he makes great videos. And those are the methodologies that you're going to need for OSCP. He starts with Nmap, Nikto, GoBuster, uh, all these kinds of tools to attack his target and enumerate it. Now, when the enumeration is done, of course, you're going to need some uh, web application attacks, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, RFI, LFI, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're also going to need some information on Nmap, maybe. I'd recommend Netcat. You should look up Netcat as well. Maybe some Wireshark. Um, you should know the TCP IP stack by now. So you should know how to use uh, Wireshark. Um, you should look up the exploit DB and know how to use the exploits that are in there. So go and look at a few exploits, try to find some vulnerable software. Usually it's included in the exploit DB. Try to download that software, uh, try to execute it, and then try to actually exploit it like it's supposed to be written in the exploit DB. Now I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that as well in a later video, so look forward to that. All right, next part, of course, Windows Linux privilege escalation. Very important, both parts, Windows and Linux. You need to be able to do both. Uh, what's also pretty important is escaping jails. So sometimes when you get a foothold on a machine, you'll be entered into a restricted batch environment. You have to know how to escape that stuff. And what's really important, and most people forget about this, but file transfer techniques. When you get your reverse shell, when you hack your machine, you have to be able to get your exploits and enumeration scripts onto that machine. Uh, and what's a little bit less important in my opinion is the buffer overflow. 
but that's because buffer overflow is a really straightforward process in OSCP and you're going to get a step-by-step -step guide. So when you get these basics down, in my opinion, you should be about ready for OSCP. There's also a, um, a list of OSCP-like machines on Hectobox. Maybe you can try to do those while you wait for your uh, lab time to start or your uh, course to arrive. And then when your course arrives, start going through your uh, videos first, then read the PDF and then go into the labs. Now I'll make a separate video about OSCP and how to tackle the course and the exam. But this was it for how to become a hacker. So when you start your exam and when you pass, for me, that's a big part of becoming a hacker. Now, let me be real clear. You don't need OSCP to be a hacker. I've known extremely good hackers that don't have an OSCP exam. But for me, OSCP showed me what's possible. And it was my entry point into the hacking community. So that's why I'm sharing this story with you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll put uh, the whole step-by-step -step plan in the description as well. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.